So one of the more important things we do as medical physicists are second checks and treatment approvals. So let's talk about doing a MU check, a second check on calculation points. And so when should you perform these? And how do you determine where to put your calc point? What are action levels for large fields, wedged fields, small fields, or low density? If action levels are crossed, what should you do? And what could be some reasons for poor results? So this is a very viable question because we do this on a daily basis. You need to know what your action levels are and it's extremely important for safe patient care. So like normal, if you have a task group, mention it right off the bat. Today, we are going to discuss TG114. That is the task group associated with MU checks. So when should you perform this? So it says, ideally, uh, before treatment begins, and at worst case, before three fractions, or also technically, uh, whenever 10% of total Rx is being given. Again, Rx is in prescription. So if there is an emergency, then you can check this before three or four gray is given. But obviously, ideally, you want to do this before the treatment begins. So now how do you determine where to put your calc point? So you want somewhere, you want to avoid high dose gradients. You want to avoid field edges. You don't want to put it near tissue interfaces or buildup regions. So you want somewhere that is getting a lot of dose, somewhere where it's getting a homogeneous dose, ideally homogeneous material and tissue as well, and avoid those things I just mentioned. And that is a great spot for a calc point, will give you reproducible results and ultimately a very accurate result. So now what are the action levels for all of these different? So large fields, we're going to look at 3.5%. And again, all of these are coming from TG114. So large fields should be easier to calc dose on. They're large. You have a large area to put your calc point in. There's more dose. So it's going to be easier to find a nice area to put your point. Wedged fields. So wedged are a little more complicated. And so because of that, you have 4.5%. That is your action level. And then small fields or low density, these are the worst cases that are most difficult because maybe a lot of modulation, maybe it's just in general a small field, so it's tough to get that you know lateral equilibrium and low density obviously is making the algorithm work very hard to ensure it's accurate just because of the nature of low density materials. So we're going to let that go to 5%. So now if the action levels are crossed, what do you do? So know what you do in your clinic. If you are doing a Mobius or you're doing a, a rad calc and an MU check and these things are passed, like what do you physically do in your clinic? Be able to describe that. And in your clinic, ideally what you do is first you try to find some random error. You want to potentially perform a measurement to verify. So you always trust measurements. And if it is a tough plan and you have some type of, it could be anything, it could be a map check, it could be a phantom where you put a farmer chamber, it could be a combination of those things. You can take actual measurements, you can change your technique. So if it's modulating so much and you're unsure about the dose, change techniques, don't modulate as hard or potentially do step and shoot, something like that. And then always, one thing you want to do is notify the oncologist. If it passes the 5%, you can go to the physician and say, hey, this is 7% off. It may be okay, but you may get up to 7% uncertainty. Are you okay with that? See what they say. They may be fine. And then you want to document all of this. Document your results. Document what you did. Document that the MD said it was all right. And then what could be some reasons for poor results? So you may have blocked field scatter discrepancies. You may have patient contour irregularities, heterogeneity, all those things I mentioned where your point may be in a high dose gradient near the field edge or buildup region. So 
Thankfully, it's not too complex of a subject, but definitely be sure to read TG114, know what you would physically do in your clinic, and then be able to verbalize it with confidence. So if you have any questions, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're enjoying the videos, and I hope you have a happy time studying.